Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about how to read Swagger or OpenAPI file using Java. I had this question a while back in 2017 in October. I made a video about how to read a Swagger file from Java and now I have got a few questions on that video of how to read body type for instance in your Swagger file and I'm also interested in how the new API is actually working so I'm gonna cover those two in this video. So first off I have a couple of Swagger files here we have the pet store Swagger file here where we have some description up here we have a bunch of paths and they have different parameters and they respond with some schema as a pet schema here and then they they almost always here send things like parameters in and get some result as a schema out and the definition of this schema is just an object that you get back and then you have some properties for that object and so on. So this is the schema that we use for the pet store. And this object, you can also retrieve pets and that's an array list of pets. So my readers need to either handle returns of one object or returns of multiple objects. And my own Swagger file here is a bit simpler. It's a very simplistic API to handle notes. In this API, we will read notes. We have this operation ID and that is the actual function call. Uh, what it will be called when you generate some stubs of this API. And then you have responses and they are usually this definition of a note and I use the body in order to send information. So here you have a body in and then that's a note and that's the text that I will set as my note. So I use the JSON schema, I send a full body of all the parameters and then I can use in some cases, for instance, when I get a specific note, I can use a path variable. So this is pretty much my schema. I will put a link to the repository in the description if you want to follow along in the code and look at these specifics. I don't go into specifics of each of the APIs, but these readers can read both APIs. And I don't read all the data. I pick some things that are interesting and read those. But if you follow the documentation or look at the different commands that you can run on the different classes, you can find other pieces of data. So if we look at my output here, I have my own swagger here. So I will put out the description, I'll put out the get notes and the name of that function and what parameters to send in and the responses. And the responses is an array of notes and the notes are ID plus a uh, text string. And then when you post a note, you have the same, you post the note and then you use the body parameter, which it co contains ID and text as JSON. And then we have the same for responses here, just one response that the note has been created. And, and the structure follows the same way for the whole document here with all the data. So this was what I implemented before. The only added thing here was the body type. And uh, so we will look at that in my old reader. So the old reader used the path par uh, swagger parser. We write out the description in the info tag, and then we will go through each of the paths as an entry, type out the key of the entry, and then look at each operation. So the operate the key is probably that this is a get command and then the operation that we go through. Uh, no, the key will be the notes uh, API and then we will go through and actually show the different operations there. So this is the operation map. We go in here and we will go through each of the operations. And there we have the HTTP method. So we will get the key value of the this to print out the method 
get for instance and then we will print out the operation id which is the function to call and we go through and print all the parameters and i have added this class here if i find that one of the parameters is a body parameter so it, if it's a class of the type body parameter i will use this function print body so this is the extension that i added to this class uh, in order to print body parameters and then I will uh, get the simplified name of the current parameter type and uh, if that is a parameter of the type path I will print that out otherwise this will probably be string or some other type like int and so on so that's what we see here this is the type string and we also have uh, some other types up here so we will print those out otherwise and then we have this little function down here that will print all the responses with some new lines uh, stuck in between and the print body is pretty simple we will get the reference property of the body from the schema and create the reference property and print that reference we have a function to print refer references so that's the same as we did before when we printed references if you have a look at the other, vi other video and print responses is the same going through finding a ref property of this uh, responses here and print that reference and down here we have the print reference and this is a little bit involved because we need to figure out if this reference is just a simple class or if it's a ray model and if it's a ray model we need to print the reference of all the items in the array so for instance when we have the array of notes here we see that we print out array of notes and when we are done we will go through and print all the references or all the different properties of that note and you see here that the actual model and the actual code is quite involved it's a little bit hard to follow but you can do it with the old api to read this but this was the version 1.15 i believe 1.0.15 but the swagger parser version 3 is now at the version 2.0.17 and they have updated this to a new parser and the version 3 i guess is the actual parser number or version for this it's a little bit strange to call it version 3 version 2.0.17 but fine uh, so if we go here and use the open api version 3 parser and we will read our pet shop here so this is a new api and if we run this one we will get pretty much the same output i output this first here open api info just to show you a nifty feature of this api everything that you print out so if you just take a function with whatever function you print out it will print it out in this semi something in between json and jaml format so you can actually see what the different classes has in them so everything here i can call by using different methods and get all this data so this is what i printed out here we will uh, use the same uh, file as we did before the swagger files we will have the same output uh, it's a little bit more easy to follow then uh, so then I will print the description as we did before and you see I print the same kind of information here The difference I've made is that it actually keys up the, re the body response uh, or the body uh, parameters as this uh, Nifty feature of what type it is as the key So the application JSON here says that this is of type application JSON and the contents in between is this so if we have the uh, post note yeah for patch here for instance you see that you send in a body of the type application json and then id and text so this is what we want to look at now and we see here that open api when we are going through all the parts 
they have this new feature in Java where you can do a for each on, uh, for instance, anything that is a map. So we do this here, then we will get a key and an item, and we will print out that key. And this will be, uh, for instance, the notes here. And then we will go in and print out item. In the item, we will look at the item and see what function is not null. I would have liked if there was some kind of array that you can actually go through and pick out the different types, but they have hard coded them to specific functions here and that's fine, I guess. So we will see if we have a head, then print head and then print that operation. If we have a get, print that and then print that operation and so on. So I go through all the different types here, print some statement first and then the different operations. And printing operations is just first off printing the operation ID that we saw earlier of the operation. So this is the function name. Then we will print all the parameters. And here we go through and print the normal parameters, but we can also print the request body. So that's a different function. It's not one of the standard parameters. It's a different one to si signal that this is not either an in type or an it, it's not a type of a specific parameter. This is the body of the content, so it's something else. And then we will print the responses down here. So these are the same functions that we did before, but a little bit more descriptive in my mind at least. Uh, print body, very simple. We take the request body, get the content, and for each of those we will print out the key, uh, the actual name of the parameter. So let's see here, ID for instance, and then we will go in and print the schema for that parameter. So that is, uh, no, we will look at body, let's see here, body, 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 body. And where we, there we have it, body. First off, we will print out this key. So this is application JSON that I said before. And then we will go through and print all the references in that schema. Response is pretty much the same. Go through key and item. Print out the description of the key and item. And for each of the contents down here. So for instance, here we have 200, which is a note and the description here is note has changed. So that's the date, the actual uh, key and the name of this response. And in this case, we didn't have any um, response body. So let's see if we can find one that has some data back in the responses. Here we have get all the notes and then we'll go through the content of this uh, response, get all the notes. And first off, we print out this key again, and this key in this case is application JSON. And then we go through and print each of the references of this media. So the schema of this reference. Print reference, uh, it first off looks at the schema and sees if this is an, uh, is an array schema. And if it's array schema, we will print the references of that array schema. So we will do a loop back and print those out. And here I believe that we could have done it, uh, a type or some, yeah. Schema get type for instance, and then uh, uh, system out the type, and then uh, put Uh, array notation after that, as we did before, so we can actually see that this is an array, but I didn't do this in this call. And then we'll go through and print all the references of that array schema. And if we come somewhere where we have a component, which is a reference of this schema. So if we look in our Swagger file here, we actually get down here and need to look at this reference we have here. So this is the specific reference. And we want to look at the note, which is defined down here in my definitions. And if we do that, 
in our new reader, I have this function to get the component name because they are not calling it definitions in this API, they call it components. And we will, if we look at that, it will say that in components and schemas, you will find something. So I will look and see if it starts with this, then I will substring that out just to get the name note. So if we jump back here, I will get that component name, and then I will look up the specific schema using that name, get that back as an object. Then I will look here if I actually, this object is an array schema again, then I need to print all the references of that array schema. So I will do a loop back again. And if not, this is the specific component schema that we will want to look at. We get the properties of that component schema and go through each of them and print out the key, which is this ID, and then the actual type of that schema. And if it's not a schema, we will just print out the simple name of that class. So this is the old API and the new API and everything I wanted to cover today. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you will want to try this new interesting uh, API to read your open API schemas and um, I hope that this will help you if you're writing a parser to, for instance, create your own stubs or update your application and so on. Um, so this is very handy to use if you are working with Swagger files. If you have any questions, as usual, leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, like these kind of tutorials, puzzles, or like interesting new libraries that I might find, then please subscribe to the channel. And I really hope to see you in the next video.